Gordon Oblish again here. Delighted to have uh, Michael Murphy with me today from Waterville Golf Links in Ireland. One of these, uh, just a, a great golf experience in the southwest of Ireland. So, Michael, thank you for finding a few minutes for us uh, to chat this morning. No problem, Gordon. Delighted to do, delighted to do so. I, I always find it intriguing how somebody uh, ends up in the position that we are very fortunate to be in in the golf business, uh, following something that's a passion for our so. Can you walk me through your experience in golf and how you ended up at Waterville? Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'll compress it because it's it can go. I was okay. I was I was born in in, uh, in San Francisco in 1973. My 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 dad is originally from Ballybone and my mother's from San Francisco. And in the 1980, uh, my parents started to move back home to Ireland to Ballybunion. And right and soon after we moved, my dad, my dad was coming back, so there was no job. The Ballybunion decided to embark on building the the cashing course, the new course with Robert Trent Jones. And my dad was hired as like the foreman to build the golf course. And uh, when the, when they when the when they built the golf course, then and it, I think it opened like in like, it opened 1983, 1984 that way. Um, they they then asked him to stay on as as its greenkeeper, and uh, that as I got old as I got older, I just wanted to be around my dad on the golf course and around with the machinery and you know just around yeah. loving that sort of thing and uh, you know play if I wasn't working on the golf course with my dad, I was playing golf and and, and you know and as I got older and older and older, you know I I did kind of want to be a golfer, but there's quite a few of my friends I I. I I couldn't beat them playing golf, and I didn't rate them too highly either. So <laughs> I, I decided that maybe uh, if I wanted to be in golf, professional golf would not be the way. So I decided to look at where I could do greenkeeping. And at that time, uh, Sparshaw College in Winchester in Hampshire had, had been one of the first colleges in the UK to offer a three-year diploma in golf course management. So uh, luckily enough, I got a place in that. And uh, I went to uh, study uh, uh, agronomy, so to speak, in in um, in in, in Sparshold. And uh, after that, I got a job in Guildford working on a golf course. And I was reading a magazine one night, and I saw the job for got Link superintendent uh, in Waterville. And I knew Waterville from growing up playing junior golf, and and all that. So I applied for the job, and thankfully, uh, my dear friend Noel Cronin was as a manager, and. Uh, he rang me up one day and asked me would I come for an interview. So I did. Uh, so I came over and did an interview. And as a funny story, uh, towards the end of the interview, uh, Noel said to me, "Well, 65 people have applied for this job." And he said, "I've narrowed it down to two." And I said, "Well, I said, am I one of them?" And he said, "You are." He said, "But the other, guy, the other guy I interviewed is very good as well." He said, "The only thing he said, the only thing though, he said he asked me a strange question. He asked me, did he, did he?" would I be able to find him uh, some land for his wife's horse? And uh, I said, well, Mr. Cronin, if it's any use to you, I don't have a wife and I don't have a horse. So, <laughs> so, so he got a great kick out of that. And, and, and on the back of it, he said, right. He said, that's it. You, if you want the job, you can have it. So that, that was um, about March 1996. And I started working the, in the 4th of June 1996 here in Waterman. And I've been there ever well, since. That, uh, <laughs> well, that's one of these great stories where there was a lot of forks in the road and at each yeah. one you made the right decision and you've ended up at just an absolutely spectacular part of the world. So yeah. Um, yeah. Waterville has, historically has got, has got a little kind of interesting fact about it was, it's been known for its fishing alongside its golf, obviously, in more recent times. But Charlie Chaplin apparently used to, to uh, vacation there in the summer months. Is that a... Is that yeah, true? Is that is that one of these Irish lures? You suspend all. You suspend his summer vacation, staying in the Butler Arms and just fishing with his family uh, every day, fishing out in the, in Loch Ron every day, because he would, he could, you know, the Charlie Chaplin you see in the pictures didn't didn't look like the Charlie Chaplin in real life. He didn't have the mustache or anything like that. But 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 he'd still be recognisable to the to people but in waterville like waterville is a great way with people that they whether you're charlie chaplin or tiger woods or michael douglas or anything like, like people recognize who you are but then they just leave it book your business you know yeah. so what has always been that way you know they you know they, they they don't get starstruck and follow people around you know so yes I think he felt safe here you know yes yeah. and so anyway so so waterville links itself i mean i always think of it as being 
you know, at the, at the forefront of Irish uh, golf from a tourism standpoint. And uh, the golf course was started as a nine holer in the 1800s, I yes. think it was. And then it struggled over time until an American businessman got involved. Well, the, the, the background of that is very interesting because, you know, um, back in the 1800s, you know, the various companies uh, tried to lay cables ac across the Atlantic. And uh, after several attempts, they decided the, the, the first transatlantic cable was, was laid bet between Newfoundland and uh, to, Bal to Bal Valencia Island on the Balance Skellies and into Waterville. And there was a lot of people employed in, in this uh, in the, with the, uh, the commercial cable company. And as part of being employed here, they, they did a lot of, you know, for recreational things, you know, they had tennis courts, they had, they, they had croquet, you know, they had running tracks, there was a lot of stuff. Like, but they also then uh, looked at uh, golf. And so they decided to build an, a nine-hole golf course on the sand dunes here, and which, which kept on from the 1800s to about the early 1960s, when then through wireless and better technology, the cable station, you know, became uh, antiquated and defunct. So... The golf course kind of say kind of they are kind of a few of the local people use it, but it kind of went into into disrepair, I suppose you could say. And then and then out of the blue, Mr. Mulcahy showed up in town one day, and he wanted to build a golf course in Ireland, and he looked at various and he wanted to build specifically a Lynx golf course. And he looked around, he looked around from Donegal to Mayo, you know, to to Kerry, to all the way around to Waterford. And but um, he set his sights on the on the land here where we are now in Waterville, and then hire you know he was very good friends with Claude Harmon who was the pro, he, the pro at Wingfoot, so between himself and Claude Harmon and they hired Eddie Hackett, they went about building uh, an eighteen hole golf course on the property, and that and and that's what they did and that's that's what that's where that started you know, and so when you think about it back in the nineteen sixty for somebody to come from the United States, albeit an Irish American businessman, and invest in a golf course in the fairly remote part of Ireland, uh, really was quite a, a visionary effort, and as it's such a huge ongoing uh, impact in the local community. Well, Mr. Mulcahy, I mean, if you think about it, like he 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 built a golf course, and then he built a you know a hundred bedroom hotel, the Waterville Lake Hotel, to 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 you know for people to come and stay. He was the first man to charter, like he was chartering 747 airplanes in the 70s to bring American tourists over to Ireland. He, he, built a, he built a runway across the river from the golf course so small airplanes could fly in, private airplanes could fly in. I mean, he was really, really ahead of his time in, in, in attracting, you know, golf to, to Ireland, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then when, when uh, Mr. Mulcahy got out of the business, uh, it was a group of, of with a strong winged foot connection, I believe, that uh, took yeah, over. Yeah, so he, he, he used to, you know, they used to play this Mulcahy Classic every year, this Pro-Am tournament, which morphed into the Kerry Gold Classic. And um, so some of the guys, some of the winged foot members, like uh, 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 John Merriweather, Jay Higgins, Richard Leahy, Jay Conley, you know, they, they, they'd be playing in the tournament. And when the, when the Waterville Lake and the Waterville Golf Links came up for sale, uh, they loved the place too uh, from coming in the tournament, so they put together a group of friends, uh, ma mainly Solomon guys, but other guys as well, and they and they bought the the Waterville Lake Hotel, Waterville House, and Waterville Golf Links, and that was in 1987, and there's still six of them involved today. They own it to this day. Which is from a, from a business standpoint, one of the great joys has been you know working with Waterville because it's consistent. It's you know so many go in terms of the ownership structure and the kind of the way that you do business. It's not where other clubs might be structured with committees and there might be a change here, a change there, and there's a pressure to make a change as to how they do business with. But Waterville has consistently, in our estimation, has striven to deliver the very best of customer service and just running it as a as a commercial enterprise uh, yeah. over the years. Um, well, I, I tell you, like the word, the word is consistency, and and uh, like w we pride ourselves when people say say to us that we're very consistent, whether in in our hospitality or the condition of the golf course, or whatever it may be, and that does stem from the fact that we've had consistent ownership for the last thirty odd years. They, we know that we know as a, as an employee, we know what they want, and 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 they know what they expect from us, and I like to think for the most part we deliver it. 
Well, I'm, I, you you most certainly do deliver it. Now, focusing on the golf course, uh, I always think it's one of the more underrated. It's certainly a recognised and, and, and enjoyed golf course, but I think it's overlooked, I think is probably a better word by a number of people because it's relative you know, position uh, in Ireland is, is so removed. Um, but it's, it is just, I think, spectacular. Over the last, I don't know if it's 15, 20 years, but Tom Fazio has been brought in a number of times to do to make some changes. Yeah, well, it's again, the, the, the history of Waterville, uh, it's, it, there's been a few occasions where you could say the stars have aligned. And whether it was Johnny Mulcahy coming, uh, or the, the cables, go back to the cable station coming, yep. to Johnny Mulcahy coming, to the, new, to the new ownership coming. And then, like, to go back to the Tom Fazio, I mean, we were. I remember distinctly. We had a meeting. We were having a golf committee meeting, which which is basically the ownership and and Noel and me, and and um, we were talking about should we get somebody to do a, a, an architectural overview of the golf course. That it was probably time to look at it. So um, Jerry Murray, God rest him, was one of one of, one of our owners here. He said, well, uh, you know. Um, He's a member. He was a member of Pine Valley, and Tom Fazio was a member of Pine Valley. He said, "Well, I kind of know Tom Fazio. Maybe I'll keep an eye out for him." Now, as it turns out, his eye out within two days. Jerry Murray was up playing in Pine Valley, and he meets Tom Fazio in the locker room. So he tells Tom Fazio about about Waterville, and Tom knew a bit about Waterville, and he said, "You know, like we're very busy at the moment, but you know, my my number one man that works for me, Bo Welling, happens to be on oh, yeah. holiday in Ireland somewhere." <laughs> so uh, as as it turns out, Bo Welling and his family were actually holidaying in Valencia Island and had played golf in Waterville with his dad the day very day before. Oh, so I mean, so 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 we rang, got in contact with Bo. So Bo came over. It was a Sunday morning, and and Bo and Noel Cronin and myself we walked around the golf course, and because Bo had played it the day before, everything was clear. And he came in. He he met us and he knew the golf course, and he said he said. I'll get Tom over here because Tom will love this place when he when he sees it, and and the rest is history. Tom came over to see the golf course, and just was delighted, blown away. You know. Now, did he did he do the backside first, or was there was there was two kind of there was a sequence to it? Yeah. Well, what we decided to do is, uh, you know, we went because you know you know we weren't going to close the golf course in the summer, you know. So we decided yep. to do it in, in phases. St- uh, over over various winters so what we did we started in 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 uh, september end of september 2002 and tom's philosophy was well to get people out because as soon as as soon as the word got out that we were going to do some work on the golf course all of a sudden the perception was oh don't touch the golf course it's a great golf course and all the rest of it so tom's tom's philosophy is right what we'll do is we'll we'll we'll, we'll hit them with big changes at the for, at the start and big changes at the end so we, we, we rebuilt the driving range, we rebuilt the first hole, the second hole, and the 18th hole in the first year. So, uh, so as Tom Fazer Christian said, we want to create the wow factor. So, yep. so that's what we did. And we also did small changes, like we did changes on the mass hole, the 12th, just taking away the, the very visible cart path and tweaked a few tees and all. So but we left it at that. And then, of course, when we opened up then, and everybody saw it and, and more or less said, no, we, we want more, including the owners from Clues, we want more. So then we hit it really hard then the next year, and we went out and we rebuilt 6 and 7 and 16, you know, and, and that was that was the probably the, the, the major construction uh, of that year. And then over the years, you know, we made subtle changes to practically every golf hole, you know, whether we, we moved the green on 13, you know, we realigned tees on, on 14, on 13, on 16, you know, so... We we had seventeen T is another one, you know. We just tweaked it here and there. So every 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 hole's had a, a a little tweak, but six and six and seven and sixteen are, are were completely brand new holes. So the 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 golf course has changed over the years. Um, any particular holes that come to mind as your favourite? If you've if you've got to go play a few times in one day, that uh, are particularly challenging or memorable or. For me, like I, like everybody thinks they jump to the holes in the sea. Like water was very, water was quite a unique. Uh, I'm gonna answer this question kind of long-windedly, but water was kind of unique because uh, our signature hole is probably the eleventh hole, and it's the only hole on the golf course where you can't see the sea at all. You know, <laughs> it meanders through the dunes. You know, so it's uh, but yet you know people talk about the the holes like 
two, three, 16, 17, 18, because they're on the sea. For, for me, my favorite holes are three, nine, 11, 12, 16. They'd be, my, I just like them because they're, they're, they're I like, um, I like strategic golf yep. design. That's my favorite type of golf. And they're very, very strategic. Like you can play the hole, you can play the hole many different ways, but there's a certain way to play the hole, which is the optimal way to play it. Yeah. And, yep. and I like that, you, you know. It's for a thinker. Yes. It, yeah. It's not just for how far you can hit the golf ball. Um, now, the, the membership at Waterville, you've obviously, I'm sure you've got more than your share of characters in the local community. Um, has the membership changed much over the years? Obviously, you've got a lot of people coming in and out, but in terms of the, the, the year-round residents that, that live in Waterville that play golf, is that quite a vibrant club? It is. Un unfortunately, like, uh, like, like most clubs, a lot of the real, real characters, unfortunately, have passed away. You know, like they're still, like the older type characters, they're, they're kind of irreplaceable, you, yeah. you know. Uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as an example of a story I always like, uh, um, John A. Mulcahy, one of his best friends was a guy by the name of Brian, Brian Noble, and he was an Aer Lingus 747 pilot, and they used to be great, all uh, drinking buddies, and Brian Noble, as in his later years, used to train the 747 pilots, and uh, you'd regularly see, I know growing up in Ballybun, you'd regularly see the 747 flying around over the golf course in Ballybun on a Sunday. <laughs> and for, for, for a fun time, one time, uh, he took the 747 and he flew it down the water, down Loch Cran and flew it over the, the roof of the Waterville Lake Hotel. <laughs> and I remember being watching, meeting them in the bar one day and we were talking about Loch Cran and I was saying, Geez, this is a very big lake. And Brian Noble, is it not? If you, do you want to try turning a 747 in it, it's not so big. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there was characters like that. But even now, yeah. I mean, it's great. You know, there's, there's uh, Waterville's uh, Waterville villages. Is, is, there's, there's there's a host of characters, you know, and that's that's you know, you need the characters for vibrance in any golf club, or any, you know. Yeah, yeah. and and I all and I do feel that you know, like I said before, so many of our of, of visitors to Waterville don't really capture the essence of it. You know, you play a great golf course and you have a lovely day and you get the hospitality and everything's terrific. But there's just that there's a bit of the crack and the, the conversation and the, the experience that makes, you know, Waterville so special that they miss out when they turn up, play their golf and have a nice drink and leave. Um, yeah. And it's there's another, uh, another story that has been told to me that calls to mind um, back when John A. Mulcahy was running his classics, uh, you know, he had a lot of celebrities uh, come like, uh, for, for instance, one would have been Jack Lemon, and Jack Lemon was supposed to have dinner with Mr. Mulcahy, and he was late, and and when he arrived, he said, like, Jack, where were you? And he said, he, he, he went to the lobster bar, and he got into a drinking session with the locals, and he, he got a bit over-served, but when, when, when Mr. Mulcahy asked you to play, uh, why he was late, he said, well, Mr. Mulcahy was in the lobster and they were lying to me and I was lying to them. <laughs> so, you know, so, you know, it's a, that, that kind of thing lives on to this day. That the, the, the longer you stay in the pub, the stories get taller and taller, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. So Hogshead was built uh, next door, uh, yes. opened two years ago. Has that, that's, I, I kind of always have the view of rising tide lifts all the boats. Has it been positive for Waterville and, and uh, kind of the, the area uh, since it's opened? Yeah, well, again, I mean, uh, the owners there, uh, Brian Marcel and Tony Alvarez, they, they, they wanted to build a golf course that would stand the test of time. You know, they, they, they built a fantastic golf course. They, they, they hired Bobby Jones, so, you know, son of Robert Trent Jones of Bally Bunyan yeah. fame. Um, they, in fairness to them, they, they spent good money on the golf course. They then built a five-star hotel to, to on the site of the old Waterville Lake Hotel uh, with some beautiful cottages beside it as well. You know, because the, the key, like for Waterville, to, for Waterville, they've, they've helped create Waterville to be a play and stay destination. Yeah. And that's important, you know, because, you know, we want people, for the village to, for the village to strive, you know, and get better, you know, you need people to stay. You know, Clarny is great. Clarny is great that it's in Kerry. You know, and but every, you know, we were always used to people getting on the bus, getting here, and going back to Clarny. No more, more people <coughs> are staying in in Waterville. 
So everybody, you know, it's not just the golf course that benefits, but it's the, the guest houses, the hotels, the restaurants, the pubs, you know. You know, and it spawned a lot of new, you know, even smaller businesses, you know, like craft shops and and and, yeah. and the like, you know, little businesses like that have 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 uh, have people have taken a chance on the back of. That's this great. Investment, you know, so there's some some similarities I see with uh, with where you are and also with the north of Scotland, for example. You know, Dornoch sat up there on its own for many years, and then the addition of Castle Stewart. All of a sudden, you know, it starts to add you know, more reason to go to go to a particular area instead of a one day in and out. You can, you know, you, you go and you'll spend two nights or three nights and play golf twice and it's terrific. So that's that's wonderful to see. Now, you touched on, we started with Charlie Chaplin, you touched on the celebrity aspect of Waterville. I, I remember in, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, there's a number of US tour players used to stop in Waterville on the way to the Open. And they would yeah. fish, I think, Mark O'Meara and Tiger and Payne Stewart. And, you know, so you've obviously got a strong connection there. Do you have any particular stories or celebrities over the years that come to mind that were enjoyable to be with or, or just added a, a... I mean, from, from the golfing perspective, I mean, like, uh, you know, um, uh, Jamie McManus is a very good friend of Waterville as well. And, you know, and he's very good friends with a lot of golfers. And JP loves coming to Waterville. And, um, you know, he, he actually encouraged Payne and Tiger and Marco Mira, David Duval, Stuart Appleby, Lee Jensen, you know, to, to come to come and play. And um, they used to come, you know, back in, the, back in the 90s and the 2000s to practice before the British Open, you know, and they came for a number of years. And uh, I mean, they were all, they were great because they come, you know, again with Waterville, nobody... Uh, nobody bothered them. They were very friendly with their time to the people, especially for with the with the young young kids and the caddies and the, the members and things like that. You know, and you know they were good. Like Payne Stewart, of course, um, he probably took more of a shine to 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 the Waterville to than anyone. Like yeah. I remember watching. I walked around eighteen holes on one Sunday morning, and he had this putter called a Seymour putter, and he used to put and walk after the ball. As it's moving, and he'd say, "What? See more putts going in. See more putts going in." And he, he, he I, I never seen anyone put like him. And he shot that that Sunday morning. You know, he shot sixty-seven around Waterville, and 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 uh, I think that really set the hook for him, and it actually set the hook for the water people for their love of him because he used to come up, and he used to serve pints in the pub and give out free pints as well. That'll always help as well, you know. But uh, on the of course, then, you know, because of his love of Waterville and the millennium, the whole thing coming with millennium in 2000, like we asked him, would he be interested in becoming like our, our captain for the millennium, which he was, uh, he was delighted to do so. And then, of course, he won, <laughs> then he won the US Open, which was fantastic. And then, unfortunately, you know, yeah. what happened afterwards is, was, you know, uh, it was a tragedy altogether. But his legacy, his legacy lives on at Waterville. You know, we have a statue of, of uh, yeah behind the ninth green or in front of the clubhouse that is is uh, uh uh you know it's it's probably the most photographed one of the most photographed statues statues in ireland actually last last september this little old lady just came in and came into the clubhouse out of the blue and we're, we're sta I was standing in the reception and uh she just said i hear you have a a statue of of Payne stewart here and i said yeah, yes i do i said would you like to see it and she said i would Payne stewart was my brother, and I thought, I thought, I said, well, I'd be more delighted. So we, we, she came out and we took pictures with her with, with Payne Stewart and the statue, like, and just showed up <clears> to <throat> the blue. You know, it was it was very very nice driving around the ring of Kerry, called in and took, got her pictures taken, and 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 then off she went again. So it was very very nice. Uh, we both um, shed a small tear because you know it was, sure. it was it was a very very nice thing to do. So. You know, like Payne, uh, Payne uh, nobody will ever forget Payne Stewart, his, his, his person, his, apart from his golfing prowess, I mean, his personality uh, yep. is on, you know, especially for everyone here in Waterville. Yeah, he was great for the game of golf and sorely missed. But uh, listen, yeah. Michael, you have been very kind with your time. Um, Waterville is just one of these special places, as, I, as I've said several times, and I, I can only wish you the very best of success in 
in 2021 and what's left of 2020, although I think they've they've kind of uh, cancelled the year. As a friend of mine says, I've watched Netflix this year and they've cancelled 2020. It's the most bizarre time that we've lived in, but uh, you've got a special place there. And you guys do such a wonderful job of, of welcoming visitors and representing Irish golf tourism at the very highest level. So I, I commend you. Well, Gordon, I'd like to thank you because, you know, Waterville has a long association with Perry Golf and, and Perry Golf have done much to promote the golf in Ireland as much as anybody. And, 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 and you know, we're, 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 we're delighted that, that, uh, of the business we do together and I'm sure, it'll, I'm sure we'll get over this COVID and we'll go from strength to strength again. Absolutely. You take care and hopefully <clears throat> you'll get a chance to use these golf clubs in the corner of your office sooner right. than later. They're a decoration at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> take care now. I take care of you. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.